What do apples and honey have to do with each other? The Super Simple Sizer 2021 edition. That's what. Yeah, we're gonna make another sizer and we're just making a really, really simple one. This time we are gonna be adding some apples in conditioning phase. So that won't be in this video, it'll be in the next video following this one that you'll see in just a couple of days. So. And we're gonna do something a little different based on the progress we've made in our brewing concoctions. So you'll have to wait for that in the next video. But in this video, we're actually gonna put things together. So don't don't leave, because that sounded like the end of a video. Don't, <laughs> Don't do that. So what I want to do though is get a fermenter, stick it on my scale. All right, I'm using honey from Bev's Bees. It's my new favorite kind of honey and I probably should have heated it up before I started, but I like to show people things that they might actually do themselves. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. So how much do I have in here? I don't know, probably about a pound. I know it's like three, four pounds for one of these jars. So this is how much honey I'm using today because that's not unusual to have just a little bit left in the bottom of a jar. So that's what we're gonna use today. So what I wanna do is just pour it in and I'm just gonna pour it right in through the funnel up top. I do have my scale going though, so I can see how much there is. I am going to stand up though, so I can monitor what's going on up there so Brian doesn't accidentally overfill. I don't think there's even enough to overfill. So if you have honey that has started to be a little bit cantankerous and solidify ever so slightly in the bottom of your jar, making pouring even more difficult, just go to your sink, run some hot water over the jar, and that'll loosen it up. All right. If after putting it under hot water for like five minutes, it's just a little bit more runny than it was before, don't worry, we have a solution for that too. Patience is a virtue, but one that we do not have while I am, filming. I do not have patience, especially when filming. I need it to work now. So I'm gonna open up some of our apple juice. And this is just Aldi apple juice. It's nothing fancy, but it's good stuff. It tastes nice. And I'm going to pour, you can't see, about halfway into the jar. So Brian is going to read you the ingredients of said apple juice, just to let you know what is in it, but more particularly, what is not in it. And the ingredients are apple juice from concentrate, which is water and apple juice concentrate. They actually have to tell you that. I don't know why. Ascorbic acid, which in parentheses says vitamin C. That's it. And that's just to maintain color. What's not in here is any preservatives. There's no ites or eights, like sulfites, sorbates, things like that. Those would actually help prevent fermentation. Now, I know some people have done it with juices that had those things. Just know it could retard fermentation or it could stall them or it could work just fine. I tend to try to get juices that don't have them. But anyway, what I have done, filled this jar halfway with apple juice. It had that stubborn honey in the bottom. I'm gonna shake the bejesus out of it. and it's almost working. <laughs> now, just something of note, just because honey is crystallizing doesn't mean it's gone bad. Honey doesn't actually spoil. So it just means that there's less water content in it than there was before. Normally adding some water, running it under some heat will usually break it up. I know Bev's honey tends to run a little higher gravity than most honeys. Most is 0 0.035 per pound in a gallon of must. Hers usually is like 0.404 to 0.045. It's almost as good as sugar. So I'm not surprised that this is crystallizing just a little bit. The only problem with us adding the juice at this point is that we aren't going to be able to tell you exactly how much honey we added to right. this must. It's about a pound. Although I can calculate it based off of what the gravity of the juice is, which I will do in a moment as soon as I get this honey out of the jar. When in doubt, try, try again. So I'm gonna pour this in. That'll actually like help dissolve some of the honey that's stuck into here too. And I'm gonna take some more of this juice and pour it in. I got most of it out, so we'll just get the rest with this. And this isn't a bad thing. You see all that foam? That is just adding oxygen to the must, which is something we want. We definitely want oxygen. So I'm kind of doing two birds with one stone here. No, this is not my intent. When we started filming this, I did not think we were gonna to have to do this. This is just one of those things that this is what happens. How do you solve that problem? So we're showing you. Things don't always go as planned. Actually, our videos almost never go yeah. as planned. 
Scripting? What scripting? We don't need a script. We just need to actually do stuff and, oh, wow, look at all these 15 things that we didn't think of that are happening. And let's deal with it. For the sake of expediency, we're not going to worry about that last tablespoon that's stuck to the bottom of this jar. We'll get it out later. Use it for something else. Probably tea. But I no longer need a scale now. <laughs> I'm going to guess it's about a pound, though. Maybe just a touch under. And now what I want to do is get a reading on our juice. That way I know, subtract what I get as my original gravity from the juice, and that tells me the gravity of the honey. It doesn't really tell me how much because, like I said, Bev's honey is a little bit hotter than uh, your typical honey. See if I could do this without spilling it all over. Might be neater than using the master baster. Look at that. Not a drop. All right. So that, see, again, the things that happen. So I'm just going to pour some of that. I watch I poured too much. We just want it to be able to float. Most juices are in the 1050 to 1055 range. This one is 1.048. Okay, so right in that range. Do we want to take a note on that along with our other sure. notes that we have yet to start taking? One very important aspect of home brewing, whether it's wine, mead, cider, or beer, is taking notes. I have been accused of not being very good at taking notes, and it's true. So in our note, we're writing what this is, which is super simple sizer. I'm going to put the date. We're going to put the date. Which is May 11th, 2021. And I'm going to put the juice. I'm going to use almost a gallon of juice, whatever fits in here. Somebody's going to ask me exactly how much. It's whatever displaced the honey less than a gallon is all we, all we did. So it's probably like... 0.8 gallons, if you really want to be specific. Um, so it's apple juice. And I'm going to notate it's 1.048 on the gravity of the apple juice, which is kind of important to know. And I'm going to say Bev's honey. And I'm going to do that little about symbol because I don't really know how much it is. One pound. And I'm going to be using 71B as our yeast today because, well, we don't call it 71 beast for nothing, but I wanted to make sure that it came out really right for this one. I know it's a 14% ABV yeast, so this should come out somewhere in the 12 to 13%. When you're working with Bev's Honey, you want to always underestimate just a little bit. So I just wanted to uh, have a little bit of wiggle room there. But anyway, that is my note. So now that we know all that, I can add in more of our apple juice. Keep in mind, I still have a bunch of honey in the bottom of this thing. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten. Okay, so that's one, uh, one half gallon of our apple juice in there. But oh. for the ease of mixing, we are going to locate our thumb saver bung and shake the bejesus out of this now. By thumb saver bung, what she means is we have a solid stopper. It doesn't have a hole. Because if the ones with the hole, if you put your thumb on it and you hold it long enough, it kind of hurts your thumb a little bit. So this is the thumb saver bunk. Yeah, it's 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 an old joke. Sorry. But as she said, now is the time to shake the bejesus out. Now, you might be wondering why we only fill it halfway to shake it up. Because it's a lot easier to shake this versus when it's full. There's not as much to move around. Plus, it's a little bit lighter, so it's not as hard to do. And I'm just going to literally shake the bejesus out of it. Okay. By now, you probably know my rule about mixing. You shake it until you think you're done, when you see no more honey on the bottom, and then you go two more minutes. Well, I did that while Derek had put some cats away because they were starting to make noise. And now I am ready to add more apple juice, if I can get the bung back out. Now that we have that all mixed up, I'm going to add more juice. Now this is when I have to decide how far up I'm gonna go, also known as just how greedy do I wanna be? Ideally, we want to get past the curve of the, the neck here, somewhere in this region, but sometimes Brian likes to push the envelope. Now, in primary, I could have just fermented it halfway up. It wouldn't really matter. But that would mean you're going through all this effort and not getting a full product out of it. So I want to get, like, you know, as much as I can. But I have all that foam. And, you know, if it goes up into the airlock, I lose the product anyway, so I gotta be a little careful. But, see, right just past the corner, that's probably about where I'm gonna go, because all that foam, that concerns me. 
So how much apple juice did I leave in here still? A pretty good amount. Um, still that much of a half gallon. So like a third of that half gallon. So a sixth of a gallon didn't get in here. So we are not making a full gallon. We're making a little bit less. But the next step is to take another reading. Now you might be wondering, what's with all these readings? Well, I like to know what's going on. I want to know what my brew is doing. So I took a reading on the apple juice alone to know what the apple juice component gave me as a gravity. Now I have the honey and apple juice together so I can pretty much calculate how much of that came from honey. That is 1.104 for an original gravity. So if I get out my calculator that teachers in school told me I'd never have with me, that is 1.104 minus 1.048. That gives me 0 0.056 for like a pound of honey. Now I'm hoping maybe it was a little bit more than a pound, but I don't think it was. <laughs> Strong honey, good stuff. Um, she does sell it, but she is under cottage law. She said this to someone. So she would have to meet you in person, which means you have to come to Sarasota, Florida. Don't think she's going to drive to L.A. and deliver honey or anything like that. Um, and I'm pouring this back in because everything we're using has been sanitized in. The red bucket of sanitization! Now, many people don't believe in pouring it back in. Okay, they think you have to throw that away or this or that. All this stuff was sanitized. And when I say sanitized, I mean we have a bucket, the red bucket of sanitization sitting right over there. I can see it, but you cannot. It has star sand sanitizer fluid in it, a couple of gallons of it. And we're just dunking things in there as we go. Everything is basically stored in there until it comes out. People ask us all the time, do we reuse our star sand and things like that? No. Once it starts to get cloudy, it's no good. By the time we've made two or three or four videos like we do in a day, it's done. We dump it and make fresh next time around. Just in case there's any confusion, the star sand sanitizer liquid is a diluted solution right. with the proportionate amount of star sand to water ratio. Yeah, probably should have said that. Okay, so next up, pitch your yeast. To do that, it's really simple. First, this is one of the things I like the la about the lavin yeasts. You can open it with your hands. You don't need scissors to cut them open. So many other yeast packages, they're like... <coughs> <Rest there. coughs> Yeah, Red Star does. I love their <laughs> yeast, but man, why why do that? Make it easy for people. Okay, and I'm just going to carefully pour this in. I am using a whole packet. I've kind of just, you know what? I use a whole packet anymore. I don't really care. You can use a half packet in a gallon if you really want to. Um, I don't really bother measuring it down anymore. But you can if you want to. We have found that using a whole packet, it seems to start up a little bit quicker, maybe gives a little bit more of a vigorous fermentation. So for our purposes, it actually seems to give a little bit of an advantage. However, it's not absolutely necessary. All right, so now that all of everything is in there, yeast included, I'm just gonna give this a final shake. And this is really just to make sure everything's well blended. I'm not gonna get a lot of oxygen in there. See how there's not just not a lot of room. And you wanna kind of make sure your yeast is not all stuck to the neck of the fermenter. They like to do that. I got most of it. And then we take an airlock and a stopper and stick it in there. If your stoppers don't fit well, you can always just take a piece of rubber band or something like that, a piece of masking tape, whatever you got to do. The next and most important step is to take your note and attach it to the bottle. But since the masking tape has been moved on me while we were filming, I will do that when we're done. But the next thing you're going to see is when this actually starts fermentation. And we will be showing you that video momentarily. So it's been like an hour, maybe a little bit more than an hour, an hour and 10 minutes or so. And wait for it, wait for it, wait, there it is. See, it's already going. There's not a lot to see otherwise, but let me let me just give you the, uh, the overview like we always do. So yeah, as you can see, the airlock activity is there. It's not super, super active yet, but it's getting there. And as we go down inside, you can see a lot of foam on the side, but I don't see tiny bubbles coming up yet. But I think it's only a matter of time. Give it maybe another hour or two, and this is going to be very, very active. What you can see, which I'm not sure if Brian's filming was able to show, is that we can see the little yeast particles in yep. suspension, and they're moving ever so slowly. They're doing the lava lamp thing. They're doing the... Oh, that thing. That's generally what happens at the very beginning of fermentation. And, and it's that's just a, them coming alive. That's really. a good sign. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now that I'm looking, I can see little 
tiny bits of bubbles coming up into the foam, newer bubbles. So yeah, it's definitely started, which is really cool. But just something to know, it can take up to three days to get to this point. So yeah. don't freak out if after a day it's not working. Someone told me that they started up a brew and it wasn't doing this after one day. So they dumped it. Then they asked me what to do. Before you dump it, ask us. Trust me, we'll get to you before it's anything serious that could be bad. But never dump in one day. It's possible your yeast was dead, which means just pour it more, more yeast and then it'll start up. It's also possible that they just hadn't woken up yet. Maybe your temperatures weren't exactly the same as ours. Maybe you used a different yeast. Maybe you used a different honey. There's all kinds of reasons. Never dump it unless there's a reason to dump it. And not starting yet isn't a reason at all. But anyway, what are we going to do with this now? We're going to let it sit. Yeah, this one's 1.104. Yeah, it, it might go for a few weeks. So probably like two, three weeks before we start seeing a little bit less activity in that airlock. And then we'll take a reading on that. But uh, we'll show you that in the next video. If you like this video, though, look up. There's another video up there. You might like that one, too.